Hi everyone, this tutorial is going to show you how to generate a fractal in Incendia next. Import that into Rhino and then again import that into Revit for documentation purposes. So if we go back to Rhino, the commands that we're going to cover is reduce mesh, smooth, Mesh repair, and quad, and quad remesh, and then contour finally. So we'll look at the first fractal that we imported from Incendia, and we'll type in reduce mesh. Sorry, you can see it's only 22,000 polygons. This one over here is 1 million, and this finally is 1,800,000. Now, this fractal over here is easy to process with the traditional method I'm about to cover, but these two, they're a lot more difficult and they require a few extra steps, and that can be shown in another video. So what I'll do is, um, oh yeah, firstly, when you import a fractal into a Rhino from Incendia, it's going to be one millimeter tall. So what you need to do is, I'll just exit there, exit there, type in box edit. Make sure you move it here. This will allow you to adjust the size, scale, position, rotation. So when you import that from Incendia, um, you can adjust the scale immediately and see how tall it is. So we'll go mesh repair, and we'll also move that tab over here, making it easier for us to generate the shapes that we need and fix them. So what I'll do now is I'll actually, I think it'll be better to go into Incendia and talk about what does the fractal actually look like, because these shapes, these jagged shapes are not the fractal the overall shape is the fractal. So when we go to Incendia, fractal tab, I'll close that first. So this fractal over here has been generated by clicking on one of the 49 options of large fractals. And they are the fractal types. So when you click on one, you can go to editors, edit, you can choose any object to use to generate the fractal. So I've clicked cube, depth is 3, radius is 0 0.7. You can always click new, add some more objects to that, go to the vector, tab, move stuff around, you can move this box around. So just for this video, I'll keep it the same. We'll go to the Render tab, Preview. So what this gives me is a nice smooth fractal. And um, it's easy to see what is going on. So if I click on Volume, go to the highest resolution, Start Volumetric, Medium. You can export that as an OBJ, which is the normal operation. Um, if you look at the fractal in, in Incendia, you can see it's um, exporting it as a very jagged shape, which is quite different to what to the surface that it's just given me over here. So the goal of this is, is to turn the re uh, sorry the Rhino file or the Rhino shape into this smooth, um, similar to this smooth fractal. So. We'll go back into Rhino and then start processing, I guess. So we'll click on this fractal. Sorry, yeah, just to explain, these shapes are an element of a larger fractal. They're not actually the full fractal, but they have fractal properties. So what we're doing now is that we're using the, the larger shape 
but the fractal, uh, I guess, calculation and form is embedded into this larger shape, which is it's quite important. So, for example, if, um, if I had to extrude that all the way up, go to the top view. render you can kind of see there's a repetitive pattern going on so this is why it's important it's important to smooth it out in rhino because so you can see the repet repetitions So what I'll do now is I'll go, um, I'll type in smooth. For the more complex fractals, what you do now with this step, you go reduce mesh and you type in 50,000. But this fractal is quite, has a low polygon count, so I'll just keep it the same. What I'll do now is I'll go to Whoops. I'll check mesh, reduce mesh. So it seems like Rhino has given me a repeated error message. So I'll go next, repair. So what this dan has done is that it removed the bad stuff on the inside. From the outside, let's delete that. So let's check it again. Yeah, this is a good mesh. Sometimes Rhino will say it is a, um, a bad mesh even though it doesn't have any more naked edges this one has naked edges and it's a good mesh but uh, sometimes you know even if it's a bad mesh you can still do the next step that's not a, pr a problem it's just you're trying to remove the stuff on the inside which slows down 3d printing and the following steps I mean you can always attempt it but it's a little bit easier for what we're doing so next step, we've got quad remesh, quad remesh. Make sure you untick sub D, this is important, because you're st only staying in the realm of meshes for the time being. So yes. Let's delete the original mesh. So what this has done is that it's converted it into a nice smooth evenly formed, I mean, the panels, I guess the square, rectangular, irregular panels are much easier to distinguish than all these triangles. So if you go to reduce mesh now, it's 4,400 polygons instead of the many, you know, 21,000. But still, this is a very low polygon count to begin with, so it's fine. So what I'll do now is I'll um, create a surface. Use the contour command. So what I've done now is that I have created contours and then I've put a floor in a position that 
um, I want my ground floor level to be. So I'll go mesh split. I'll type hide. Delete the bottom. I'll select everything. Deselect the top. Solid extrude planar. Make sure solid is ticked as yes. Type in 150. So now I have some floors and I have my mesh surface. I'll now put that into Revit. Export selected. Track. Why not just call it anything as long as I can distinguish what I'm importing, I guess. Architecture, element, generic models. So now what this has done is that I can see the overall shape. So when I go to East tab or any elevation tab, I guess, I can move it down to my levels. So this now lines up with the levels I've set previously. So I'll go to my ground floor tab, it shows up. And yes, my level one shows my floor and my facade. So then I'll go to the section tab. And I can see, you know, where it's been cut. I'll tick the thin lines. This allows me to see. Yeah, the section line was already evident. So what I'll do now is I'll go to the Annotate tab, Region, Build Region, use a square, draw on my floor section. So this essentially patches for documentation purposes your floor. So if we go to this tab over here, I can choose different hatching styles. But for this purpose, I'll just type in duplicate and then concrete. Oh, it's already been used. Nice. So it's given us a nice um, concrete hatching. But what I've done previously is I've created another name by clicking duplicate and then I've assigned it a new hatching pattern so I guess we can do the same for the ground floor assign concrete and if we go to the sheets tab I already have my section now I have my hatchings and now I can just explain I guess my overall fractal form already being given the section cutout so if we go to section I like to use the medium uh, dense um, don't know how to call this but medium refined or something I'm not sure why it's showing up as red, but anyway, if I go into my sections or my sheets, I can see what's going on inside of my fractal form. 
So as we discussed, I think previously, we can't create a curtain system on a DXF import, a mesh DXF import. So we'd need to have a few extra steps in um, Rhino to allow that to happen. But what we've done here is that we've processed the fractal in Rhino and it's now easier to see with what's going on in Revit. So going back to the sheets, to get the A3 sheet, click on it, edit family, file, family, title blocks, open the A3 um, title block, then load into project again, click on the title block, and then you can select which title block you need. So if I, I can go back to A0, make this a, tall, a bigger scale. But for these purposes, I'll just keep it this, like this. And you can go to New Sheets. I want a new sheet there. And then for this sheet, I can change it to Elevations. Oops. Elevations. And this one would be sections, but normally it starts off with site plan, which would be the top view. So what we spoke about earlier is that the fractal has, you know, repetitive shapes. So it has starts off with this one on the top and goes to this one, twists around, I mean rotates, has that one, rotates again and it has that one over here rotates again and has this one over here. So the interesting thing about this when you extrude this all the way up it almost has this nice irregular skyscraper shape which is better for wind loads at really high floors 500, 600, 700 meters. So this organic fractal organic shape could in fact be some of the answers to of how to solve massive wind loads at um, really high levels. It's just a theory. It's probably not true but it requires Grasshopper to sort of analyze those those wind loads to verify that. So yeah thank you that's it for this video and see you next time.